And would you look at that? We've hacked a maestro cam on attack. Hey up troops, it's a little to near again with another video and this time we're going to look at how to play Brava. Brava has to be one of the most interesting operators that's come out in recent memory. The amount of interactions that she has with other gadgets on both her own team and the opposing team is insane. It makes for so many different scenarios. So as usual, we'll go over the loadout, we'll go over the basics, we'll go over some really cool interactions, and then we'll go over some, like, where I think you should be best using Brava. I'm not saying I see people using her wrong, I just don't think they're using her in the most effective way, and they get the Kludge drones killed really early on. I don't think it's the best way of using her, in my opinion, but I'll explain that a bit later in the video. Other than that, I think that's enough waffling. Let's get stuck into it. So first things first, let's get into Brava's loadout, and a very good loadout at that, I might add. Brava gets the Para 308. The Cammers, or C-M-R-A-S, C-A-M-R-A-S, I think I just said that right. The Super Shorty, the USP-40, Smokes, and Claymores. Now, I know we've been over this a few times. I'm not a massive DMR user. However, the Cammers is really, really good. It's the same DMR that Buck has. Decent weapon if you're good with DMRs. For me, the Para 308 is up there with the best weapons in the entire game at the moment, mainly because you can add this thing to it which is not a, one of them. It's one of these, an extended barrel. Takes the damage up to 52 damage. So you can down a, a three-speed operator in two shots at the minute, use, knowing that then you can do 104 damage, providing you know you hit him in certain areas on the body, etc. You can have a 1.5 extended barrel vert grip. It's such a good weapon. There's barely any recoil. The damage output's so high. Really, really good. In terms of a secondary, because this Para 308 has such a high capacity, I say such a high capacity, it doesn't have a low capacity. I know with Siege now, a lot of guns have a lot lower capacity, but it has 30 rounds still. So for me, I take the Super Shorty so I can open hatches, uh, play vertical, and make lines of sight in walls. I don't often change to a sidearm if I've got 30 rounds in my weapon. I know now with the reload changes, it's a bit more beneficial to have a sidearm with you. I can't turn down the opportunity to be able to make um, a hatch, a soft hatches open and lines of sight. Plus, a Super Shorty does a decent job at short range if you need a secondary weapon. In terms of smokes and claymores, I always run smokes unless I know I've got to watch a flank or I've got to put a claymore on a flank. If we've got no Nomad, no Gridlock, or nobody else with claymores, I will take claymores, but my preferred option will be smokes. So for me, Para 308, Super Shorty, and smokes. So getting started with Brava's basics, then Brava has access to this thing. This thing is a Kludge drone. The Kludge drone is a drone, as the name suggests. Uh, when this was first released, I thought it was going to be like an artillery-related thing. Um, artillery is not the easiest thing to say under pressure, by the way. Artillery, I've just gone with. An artillery-related drone. I can't talk. I've had a mare. Uh, what this thing does, uh, you throw it on the ground like this. You access your drones. It's in your list of drones and cams. I haven't thrown another cam down yet, so let's throw another cam, and you can see that we have normal drones one and two here. And then as we cycle across, we get to the clutch drone. You can see the icons different down in the bottom left. So what the clutch drone does, when it gets in range of an enemy gadget, and there are various enemy gadgets that you'll see that you can do things on and things that you can't do things on. I'm just showing you here the range. The range of the Kludge drone is 10 meters. You can see 30 meters, 12 meters, 11 meters, 10 meters. When we get to 10 meters, you can see that it lights up on the UI. If we move back outside of 10 meters, you can see that it still shows you what the, the thing is that you're looking at in the middle of the screen. Let's do it with the bulletproof as well. You can see the bulletproof logo, the ADS logo, back to the, stand, the default cam logo. But only when you're within 10 meters does it light up in the middle. You can see that the UI, the green lights around the middle of the screen, also get a bit brighter as well. So once that lights up in the middle of the screen, you can now left-click on this device, and it will hack this device. Now, it takes a set amount of time, and I'll show you how long it takes. As you can see there, it takes about two seconds to hack the device. Once the device is hacked, you'll see that it glows like this, whether you're in the drone or whether you're not in the drone. If you're not in the drone, you can still see that it's yours because it, ha it lights up blue like so. Again, you can see it's like that there. So again, we'll come over to the ADS. We'll tap hack. Two seconds later, boom. That ADS is now an attacker gadget. And the way that ADS is and with my magnets and maestro cameras and echo drones all interact when they become attacker gadgets is insane. And we'll get into that later on. Again, we'll just do one more example there on the bulletproof. Hack that. Now becomes an attacker gadget. We go into our cams now. And look, we have a bulletproof camera on attack. Let me just bring Jaeger out the closet here. For want of a better phrase. Here's Jaeger. Hey, buddy. That's now an attacker camera. Even though it's a bulletproof camera that was, or should be, really, a defender gadget. 
So in terms of numbers, then, in a summary, the range of the Kludge drone is 10 meters, and it takes two seconds, or two and a half, there or thereabouts, to hack the device. Now, in terms of Kludge drones, you get two in your arsenal, and two Kludge drones, each Kludge drone gives you three charges, or three shots. Now, we've used all three shots of the original drone on the uh, cameras that we're hacking, and you can see here on the right... Oh, let me go back to the right drone, sorry. On the right-hand side here, you can see this is the drone we've already used, if you look at the bottom right and in the middle of the UI, well, I'll just hover it over the default cam. Look above the default cam, you can see that those three crosshairs are greyed out. If we swap over to the active drone, you can see in the bottom right it says number three. And if you look above the default cam again, you can see that those three crosshairs are very much brighter than those three. This means all the three charges on this camera or this drone, sorry, are gone. However, all three charges on this clutch drone remain. Now, a point of note when it comes to hacking a gadget... You need to be within that 10 meter range at all times. So if we go to hack the shower the showers cam, let's just go to about 9 to 10 meters so we can move out of range. Like this. If we move out of range mid-hack, the hack will fail. So you have to stay within 10 meters the whole time, otherwise it'll fail. That was close that time, but we keep moving out of range. So you've got to stay within 10 meters of the device that you're hacking. It's not like you can just bowl down this corridor, go like this, and then go, right, what's next to hack? because it doesn't work like that. Now, a point of note is look at the charges in the bottom right, or if you want to look above the default camera again, you see those those three crosshairs. If we start charging, you can see that it, it looks like it's going to lose you a charge, but until you actually hack a, hack a device, until you f successfully hack a device, you don't lose a charge. So you can drive around the map, shooting at whatever you want. You don't lose any charges. You only lose a charge once you've hacked a device. So just to give you an example of that, you see those three crosshairs there and also three in the bottom right-hand corner. That's now down to two crosshairs above the default cam, as you can see. And then also down in the bottom right, down to two charges down there. They never recharge. You only get three per drone. Use them wisely. Now, just in terms of the drone sizing, I know most of you will have probably played Brava already, but looking at the drone, it looks quite thick and chunky compared to a normal drone. Don't panic. You can still get through drone holes just as easily as you can before. And the jump height and everything else is exactly the same as a normal drone. So if you want to jump up here, you can jump up there. If you want to jump up onto the bomb and then stay on top of the bomb or go on top of the fridge or go on top of the worktop. You can do all that. It's exactly the same maneuverability as a standard drone. It makes a little bit of a different noise. The only thing is with this drone, it is louder to people, uh, defenders who are around the drone. So it sounds louder and slightly different to a normal drone. So it does alert a little bit more attention than a standard drone. Now, in terms of the defenders that this affects or the defenders it can affect... I made another video called Can You Hack This? Which is an entire list of Brava versus every defender to see whether you can hack the gadget or not. Now that video is was probably made about four weeks ago. If you scroll down through my videos, it's called Can You Hack It? Or if you type in A Littleton Brava on YouTube, you'll find it. Um, and you can watch an extensive video on how Brava interacts with every defender. What I'm going to do here is go through a list, okay? So I'm going to reel these off. I might miss one, I hope I don't, but I'm going to reel these off while staring at Jaeger right down the eye, right? So we've got, you can hack, Alibi Prismas, Echo's Drone, Ella's Grismot Mines, uh, Jaeger's ADS, Capcan's Traps, Lesion's Goo Mines, Maestro Cameras, Malusi Banshees, Mozzie Pests, and Mozzie Drones after they've already been captured, we'll come on to that shortly, Mute's Jammers, Thorn's Razor Bloom Shells, Wamai's Magnets, Valkyrie's Cameras, any Bulletproof Cameras, such as this, um, any default cameras, such as this. And Bandit shock wires. Now, this is very slightly different. Bandit shock wires, Cade's electro claws, Smoke's gas canisters, Thunderbird's coners, and Defender C4s. You can hack them, but they're immediately destroyed. So, what will happen is, if, you were if this was a Bandit battery, much like the way you've hacked this, instead of hacking it, it would blow it up. So that's Bandit, Cade, Smoke, Thunderbird, and C4s will be um, vaporized, essentially. The other one that's a really cool interaction that's changed a couple of times, and I will show this in a second, is Aruni's Surya Gates. The way that Brava interacts with Aruni has changed, and we'll get into that now. Thanks for your help, Jaeger! Surya Gates, and how Brava interacts with Surya Gates is a hot topic because it's changed a few times since um, Brava's release. Before you say, I know I've put this on the wrong side of the door, it would really go on the other side of Split, but don't worry about that for now, this is purely for demonstration purposes. So, 
So the Kludge Drone on the floor. As you can see at the minute, this is a standard um, enemy city gate. If I was to go through that, I would take damage, and then the gate would be burned for 30 seconds. A Rooney, on the other hand, seeing as it's her gate at the minute, can moonwalk back through it, no problem. Yep. There we go. And back through the other way. Very nice, a Rooney. So, if we jump on our Kludge Drone now, and you have to aim at the sort of whatever you want to call that of the Surya Gate, sort of the main console of the Surya Gate. Press and hack the Surya Gate. Two seconds later, boom. That Surya Gate is now an attacker gadget. So this is now changed. So when this was released, it was the case that if you hacked a Surya Gate, it would disable the Surya Gate. That's now changed. So at, let me go back on that, actually. On the test server, it was originally like this. And then we went on to the main server, the, like the main build of the game, and it used to disable the gates. It's now changed again. I believe it was a mistake on the main build. I think it should have always been like this. But this is now an attacker Surya Gate. So I can walk through that, no problem. Hey -o. See you later. I've got somewhere to be. So if a defender was to throw a C4 through here, um, or if a defender was to throw a gas canister, they couldn't stand next to it to make it disappear. It would burn it, just like it would if I tried to throw it from here anyway. But an attacker can walk through it. It blows my mind, that's the thing. However, obviously if a Rooney tries moonwalking through this again, Boom, there we go, there's the damage, 30 damage gone. And the attackers can reset this as well. Now, I know this takes exactly 30 seconds to reset. I'm probably not going to be talking about this for 30 seconds more. But if we are, then I'll reset it for you. But it works exactly the same as a Defender Surya Gate. And how easy is that to destroy? Or, well, to stop? Not only do you destroy it, not only do you never have to worry about that Surya Gate ever again, that's now a Defender problem. Brava is honestly so good, and I'll come into a bit later on where I think she's best used because it's all well and good talking about this, but I've seen a lot of people use her um, not particularly effectively. Oh, look, 30 seconds later. Boom, reset. Absolutely insane. And now that's a real... Now a Rooney's trapped. That's a real problem. So, yeah, when it comes to Surya Gates, it will now become an attacker gadget. Therefore, we can come through them, and defenders can't once they're hacked. So just to give you an idea of what it looks like when you uh, go for Cade Claws or Bandit Batteries, you can see here the Bandry, uh, Sneaky Band, Bandrit? I don't know who Bandrit is. Sneaky Bandit here is playing uh, the Bandits here on the uh, the meeting to Kitchen Wall. So again, much like before, you've got to be within 10 meters. However, once you hack it, two seconds later, pop. And there's no way of a defender stopping that. What I'm going to test quick, actually, is once it's hacked, can Jaeger pick it up? So I've got the other computer here. I've never tried this before. I'm just thinking about it. So we start hacking it. And Jaeger can pick it up. Oh, sorry, Jaeger Bandit can pick it up. You don't lose a charge for it. As long as Bandit starts picking it up. I'm just going to try one more time, sorry. As long as Bandit starts picking it up before that process finishes. Just to give you an idea when it comes to Bandit tricking... I can start picking it up late on, and that can see, yeah, okay, interesting. I've literally just learned that as I've done that. So Bandit can stop it, once, but all Bandit has to do is start picking it up. At the start of the pickup process, that's when the process stops. It's not like you have to pick it up before the process finishes. The minute you start picking that up, that process stops. I'm on the wrong keyboard. Let me try that again. Let me just show you how late you can do that on... Uh, <laughs> Trying to do two keyboards on my seat. Right, let me show you how late you can do this. Oh, I'm pressing... <laughs> this is only funny to me, right? But as you can probably see then, Jaeger, uh, Bandit started moving over to the right-hand side. Well, that's because I was pressing D and not F. I was, I was strafing to the right doing that and not pressing F to pick the battery up. Right, final try. Oh, no, we're out of charges on that clutch drone. We'll have to get another clutch drone. Hey, so like I said before, it's all about the production value, right? All right, I've got the right key. Let me show you how late we can do this. Just right at the end there. You can see the process is almost complete. And right at the end, Bandit picks it up. Let me make sure I'm looking down in the right place. Interesting. We spent slightly longer talking about that than I wanted to. But it's interesting to see that as long as Bandit starts that pickup process before the full um, drone takeover process is finished... It cancels and Bandit is able to keep that battery. Interesting. Okay, we've seen a few cool interactions now, right? This is where it gets wild. This is Mozzie. Meet Mozzie. And this is Brava. This is where it gets a bit insane. So, this technically has uh, not an unlimited, but a, a crazy range of, of interactions between Mozzie and Brava. So, we've got a pest on the floor here. We'll jump on Kludge Drone 1. 
That's not a clutch drone. Apologies. This is a uh, this is a clutch drone. Let's see. There's a pest here. We can hack the pest. Okay, pest hacked. That means now we can drive this drone past the pest. No problem. Now the mad thing is, let me bring this other drone in because we're going to need this. The crazy thing is that's now an attacker pest. So I know what you're thinking. Well, there's no. What's the use in an attacker pest? Because the defenders don't have drones. Well, they do. So I'm now going to play Mozzie and capture that drone I just drew, drove in, right? So I'm now playing Mozzie. I've now got control of this drone that you can see over there. And we go past the pest. <laughs> and the attacker pest just captured the defender drone, which is massively backwards. I'm aware of that. However, now, this is now an attacker drone again. As you can see, I've got control of it. You can see it's once been mozzied, though, okay? So, what we're going to do now is jump on Mozzie again, and we're going to pest this drone. And we've now retaken over that drone. I'm now Mozzie. I've now got control of that drone again. I go on Bravas cams. I don't have control of that drone. I only have my normal drone and my one clutch drone that's out. However, we can just take over that drone. Do you want that drone? No worries. You can have that drone. So that drone is now an attacker drone. That was once a Mozzie drone. Here it is. And where it gets wild is Mozzie. Let me throw my other clutch on the floor, sorry. Mozzie can use his um, pest on a clutch drone. Except I can't because I've used three. So to be continued in just a second. Okay, we're back with a fresh set of pests. So we're talking about only hacking standard drones here. But the interesting thing is Mozzie can hack clutch drones as well. So if I'm Mozzie... That clutch drone is now mine. I can now get on the, the clutch drone. And I can now attack, or hack, sorry, not attack. I can now hack attacker gadgets. So that drone here is still Brava's drone. Well, Mozzie and his clutch drone can now take over that. So that's now a defender drone. However, don't worry about that. I've got a second clutch drone. So this is Mozzie's clutch drone. This is my the Mozzie's current drone, yeah? Well... I can take over Mozzie's clutch drone back. That's now my clutch drone again. I have two clutch drones now. This is the one that was once Mozzie. You can tell by the honeycomb effect on the screen. But don't forget, we have this drone that Mozzie took over with this clutch drone. So using the same clutch drone, as you can see, by the way, one of the charges has already gone. Look down in the bottom right. It says two. Mozzie used one of them. I'm now going to take back over my drone, which was originally a defender. Uh, sorry, originally an attacker drone. Which Mozzie took over with a clutch drone. I've now took over the clutch drone with another clutch drone. And that is now an attacker drone again. I know it sounds outrageous. I know it sounds ridiculous. It's essentially droneception. But what just happened there? Mozzie took over this drone with a pest. Using this clutch drone, which was then a defender clutch drone. Mozzie took over this drone. <laughs> I then put my second clutch drone down. Retook over the drone that Mozzie took over. And then also use the drone that Mozzie took over to retake my drone back. Now everything you can see here is now an attacker gadget. And we can do all that again with, if I can get onto my other PC a second, we can do all that again with Mozzie and another pest. Absolutely insane levels of interaction between Brava's pests. Uh, sorry, it could be Brava's pests. I made a mistake then, but it's not technically wrong. Between Mozzie's pests and Brava's clutch drones. It's an insane level of numbers of, of, of interactions and, and things that can change. There's one thing I would say, just like normal drones, um, when it comes to taking over um, a clutch drone as Mozzie, you can't tell as an attacker. This one's lighting up blue because it was defender and then hacked back to attacker. This is now a defender drone, you can't tell. I like normal drones, there's nothing that gives it away. The best way of doing it is ping it. And if you ping it, it comes up red, it's, it's defender. And if it comes up blue, it's attacker. And that's the best thing to do as well. Let me just um, fire a pest at this drone here. It's the best thing you can do as well, by the way, when you're attacking. If you ever want to know if that's a mozzie drone or not, just ping it. And if it's red, it'll be a mozzie drone. And if it's not red, if it's blue or whatever color you have it set as, you know it's friendly. So if you see a drone you're not sure, don't be like, I'll just shoot that just in case. I better be safe. Just ping it and that'll tell you. Anyway, we digress. Let's get back onto Brawler. So just to touch on the interaction with Echo, because I think it's probably one of the best ones. Um, imagine playing Echo, right? And the reason you're playing Echo is because you get a, a supernova with insane damage. And you get to put a silencer on it, so it sounds really cool. 
Sounds cool. But also, you get these, right? They're unreal. Great little drones. Yokai's they're called, I believe. Anyway, so... The interaction here is really, really cool. And the reason why is as follows. So, you can hack the Yokai drone. I mean, first of all, imagine playing Echo and you think, oh, I get Yokai drones, that's awesome. And someone plays Brava and using two of her six charges across two clutch drones, she hacks your Yokai drones. And not only do you not have access to the Yokai drones anymore, she's now going to use the Yokai drones against you. It's un. And the more I talk about Brava, I really do think she's absolutely class. Anyway, you can hack the Yokai drone. Okay, Yokai drone hacked. The thing to remember, as as you've just seen, it will always drop to the floor if it's on the ceiling. Always. So that you've got to be quick in swapping straight back to the Yokai and either lifting it up or moving it somewhere where it's safe out of the way. Once you've got the Yokai, the only thing with Yokai's is, as you can see there, I feel like they're one of the most obvious devices that have been hacked. So I feel like you have to be a bit sneakier with them. Anyway. What I'm going to show you is, you can plant as an attacker, and then you can use the yokai exactly how a defender would use it against the attackers normally. So the divide that we're planted now, okay, we're on the yokai. Echo now comes in to defuse. Echo's defusing, it takes seven seconds to defuse, we're about halfway. Boom, Echo's off the defuse. We've just echoed Echo off the diffuser. Do you know how mad that is? absolutely wild it's one of the coolest interactions but imagine being able to just echo echo unreal echo thanks for your time appreciate it so i know we're outside in oregon now but i'm just going to roll a clip that i recorded when bra was on the test server because you need three people to do it and i haven't got three people with me at the minute and it's going to show you the jaeger interaction with brava so once hacked, once you've hacked a Jaeger, uh, Jaeger ADS, I was going to say a Jaeger then, kind of works. Once you've hacked a Jaeger DS, um, you can then, that ADS is then attacker, so you can catch C4s, smoke canisters, uh, impact grenades, anything you can throw, really. Um, so I'm going to roll that clip now. Oh, I'm talking like a Hollywood director. Roll the clip. I'm going to show that clip now, but I can't record it right now because I haven't got two other people with me. So um, I'll show you that clip. Um, but it's the same thing. It's just an older clip on bank. So roll the clip. So mutes here with these C4. Someone's going to start planting in the default spot here. And out comes the C4. Absolutely snagged by the ADS. So we've swapped maps for a second. So I just want to talk about where I think Brav is best used. And, and where I think I've seen people using a... I don't want to say wrong. But just not in the most effective way possible. So in my opinion, Brav is best used to help your team get to site not to destroy what's on site. That's another job, in my opinion. So let's just say, for example, I mean, if there's nothing on the way to site, then yeah, by all means. But what I've seen people do is, for example, they'll be out here on the on the balcony and they'll tuck in here like most people do. They'll get on the clutch drone, they'll come straight through here. They'll wander through here and they'll start looking at what they can do on the site to affect the site. Like there's probably an ADS on this wall, or there might be a, a mute jammer on the wall over here, or whatever it might be. I feel like the... They go straight for site because that's where the most utility is. That's where the most sort of, I don't want to say excitement like everyone's a kid, but do you know what I mean? You're like, oh, I can oh, I can get an ADS here. Get well, my magnet there. What else can I get? A bandit battery here, whatever. That isn't the best way of using Brava, in my opinion. In my opinion, the best way of using Brava is helping your team. I don't know why I've driven that drone there. It's helping your team get to site. So let's use the stairs in Villa as an example. You're going to find a Banshee. Not always here because it's not in the best spot. Might be on the floor here. Wherever you find, doesn't matter where the Banshee is. That's not the point. But getting up these stairs is a nightmare in itself. However, you drop your clutch drone outside the front door. You can come to here. You can hack that. You're within 10 meters. You can hack that now from here. You're f relatively safe being here, right? You're not going to get the drone destroyed. The thing with the clutch drones is they're so fragile. One bullet, one one hit from any gun, and it's a goner, right? Doing that now, this is now a friend. So just to show you the interaction with Malusi, that's now a, a friendly banshee. And if we jump onto Malusi's POV, come down the stairs here, that's now buzzing Malusi. It blows my mind every time I see Brava interactions. That's now buzzing Malusi, despite it being Malusi's gadget. It's wild, isn't it? Anyway... So that's my point. In my opinion, it's best used to help your team get to site, not to break into site. There's a lot of problems that people have on certain maps, like choke points, like areas that you need to take. So 90, for example, is a good one. Um, there's also, um, I like red stairs. There's probably banshees or um, goo mines or various other things on these stairs. 
Get rid of things like this to help your team get there. Or get if you're doing a north side take and there's utility in, around this area here, like goo mines to let know people, or grismot mines in closets and all that sort of stuff you see. Brava, in my opinion, is best used getting rid of the utility on the way to site, not clearing the site, because 99 times out of 10... Whoa! I haven't said that for a while. 99 times out of 10... You're going to get the Kludge Drone destroyed as soon as you drive into sight, especially seeing the way I've seen people playing it. Like, driving through this door 20 seconds into the round. And they're like, oh, my brother going, drone's gone. And you're like, oh, what, what a surprise. It's because there's four people here, like, trying to g absolutely gag into swing study door. That's why your brother drone's gone. Use it to get rid of the utility on the way to sight. The other thing that I really want to stress is the value of default cameras on attack. I know with, with Brava, the exciting thing is getting things like Banshees there or getting bulletproof cams here that I haven't done anything with yet. But by the way, what a bulletproof cam spot that is. Or in this one, it doesn't really make too much of a difference, but you can see 90 better from this one. What a bulletproof cam that is. You get sound for study, you get main stairs sound. The attackers always come up here and never loop back, obviously. And if they do loop back, you can't do anything about it. You can't destroy it. Like you the only thing you can do is punch it. But if you punch it, you can still hear sound on it anyway. It's such a good camera. Use that as often as you can. So, um, yeah, default cams. There's a lot of things that can be said about default cams and the benefit of them. Don't forget, you can manipulate lines of sight for Brava as well. So let me just come down to the 90 hatch. And then providing I don't shoot the cam, I don't shoot it out here. This is not probably going to be the best example, but I need to try and find the 90 cam underneath. What I'm going to tell you is you can... You can still hack, thing, hack things through walls. Where's the 90 cam? There we are. So, I chuck my clutch drone here, providing me within 10 meters, which I'm hoping we are. Oh, I can't quite look up high enough. I can't quite get the right angle. Needs to be further back. I've got a shotgun. I can't believe I'm doing this. Can we see? Yes. There we go. You can see now we're eight meters away. We're underneath in the hatch. You can hack that camera. And I cannot stress to you how valuable having 90 cam would be on attack. It's ridiculous. Look at that. Now, don't get me wrong, if we just nip back upstairs, don't get me wrong, it does light up blue for the defenders as well, so the defenders know they haven't got it, but how often do you look at default cams as a defender? You literally never do. Yeah, I mean, you can barely even see. Yes, we know it now, but when you come up here and you're worried about getting swung from bar or from 90, and you look at, oh, where's, where's the last one? Where's the last one? You're absolutely not looking at that. Now, the difficulty you have with Bro, I feel like I'm talking a lot here, and I do apologise, but... I f <clears throat> excuse me, the difficulty with Brava is I, it's so ingrained to me to shoot default cams as soon as I come past an area. So if I was attacking from the north side, and like we spoke on the Villa video, if I wanted to clear 90, pre-fire that angle, pre-fire the pillar, pre-fire the pillar, nothing there, I can push down, right, okay. Next thing I'm doing is shooting that, and it's gone straight away. The amount of times I've shot the camera and gone, oh, oh, that was ours, Brava, hack that. I do it all the time. So just, if you, you've you got to be conscious if there's a Brava on your team, just try and make note not to automatically shoot the cams. Just double check that they've not been hacked already. But I can't stress enough the value of having the, um, the value of having the default cams. A classic is when you're attacking the other side of sight. Use this drone hole at the bottom of Astro stairs that we'll run to now. Use this drone hole here. And right at the start of the round, you can come in here to the bottom of Astro stairs. Yoink that camera. Boom. Thanks very much. And I'll see you later. Take the drone back outside. You've still got two charges left, but you've got the Astro cam. So if you're attacking Trophy Statue, that's unreal. But don't forget, if you're also doing a north side attack onto Aviator Games, taking that camera saves you even putting a drone here. It saves you putting a drone there. It can now act as a flank cam. Has anyone got an Astro flank? Yeah, mate. It's the default cam. So, so good taking default cams. It's really underrated. So there we have it. That's how I think you should be playing Brava and some of the ways to play Brava. One of the most interesting operators, without doubt, that's gone straight into the meta. The Copenhagen Mage is happening at the minute. I'm going there next week, by the way. If you're going, come and say hello. Um, but it slipped straight into the meta. Loads of pro teams at Copenhagen are already using Brava. She's getting banned in pro matches. That tells me that she must be straight into the meta. I mean, it has to be meta. There's nothing more satisfying than killing Capcan with the cap counter app. As always, I massively appreciate you watching to the end of the video. If you've got this far, we have a random word. Um, nail clipper. I've got a nail clipper here. If you've got this far, nail clipper in the comments if you don't want to comment anything else. But anyway, thank you for watching. Appreciate you getting this far. And we'll see you next time. Cheers.